Good evening. Welcome to the Lake Mills City Council. It sounds like my microphone's working. Uh, City Council meeting for August 2nd, 2022. Can we please have roll call? Mr. Fields? He was on earlier, but he might be having some uh, connection issues. So uh, we'll keep an eye Clyde on Bell? it see if he comes back. Here. Okay. Mr. Waters? Here. Ms. Carler? Here. Mrs. Bishop? Here. All right, thank you. If everyone could please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Correction and or approval of the City Council Minutes of July 19, 2022. Um, that was in the packet and uh, I got word that it was updated with some, with some revisions. Did you, did you have a comment on that, Lisa? Oh yes, I just, when I was reading through them just about an hour ago, it looked like we had missed, uh, it omitted the approval for the Sidewalk Cafe license for Daydream Believers, so the, it looks like Misty posted an updated version that does have that on the record. So Misty, was there any other changes? I found an extra period that I removed in a different paragraph. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was it though. All right. I'll make a motion to approve the City Council Minutes of July 19th, 2022. Second. Motion by Ms. Curler, second by Mrs. Bishop. Any other discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. That's four and there's no Steve yet, so we'll say 4-0 on that, it passes. Correspondence uh, from the community. Um, I had some correspondence regarding the role of the Public Works Board with respect to the strategic plan. And um, I think probably a number of us received uh, regarding the financial guarantee for Topol Service Center, which is on the agenda tonight. All right. Ms. Quidnow? I didn't have as much. I had um, a correspondence with regard to the city manager hire, but that was pretty much it. Mrs. Bishop? Yes, I also had a correspondence regarding um, our decision tonight for the city manager. All right, and I didn't have anything uh, additional, so we're good. And, I, and Mr. Fields is back online. Welcome, Mr. Fields. Did you get any correspondence? I'll keep moving. He might be having some uh, difficulties connecting yet. All right. So we'll move on to uh, questions and public comment. Uh, the public is encouraged to address the council at this time regarding items on the agenda. Public comment may also be made at this time on items that are not on the agenda. If you've registered with the city clerk before the meeting has been called to order. The state's open law meeting laws discourage action by council on items not listed on the agenda. Please keep your comments limited to three minutes and state your name and address when starting your comments and fill out the sign-in sheet provided. So the um, microphone is available and open. Any comment tonight? Is there anybody online that would like to make a comment? Going once, going twice, public comment is closed. Thank you. City Manager's Report, Mr. Wilkie. 
I have nothing to add tonight. Any questions for Mr. Wilkie tonight? All right. This is going quick. Mm -hmm. Council members, board report. Council member, board reports and acceptance of minutes from Planning Commission of January 28, 2022. Any uh, comment on that? I, I did notice that it said there was a 7-0 vote on the acceptance of their previous minutes, but two people abstained, so I imagine that was a 5-0 with two abstain abstentions, but well, it's been five. Oh, I can't remember if we corrected that in our last meeting or not. It sounds like we didn't, so that would be correct. But other than that, everything good. All right, we'll accept that into our record and move forward. Uh, council business. Looking at resolution 22-40. Let me pull that up here. Thank you for bearing with me here. Hello, this Mr. Waters. Can you hear me? Yes. How you doing, All right, Mr. Fields? I think, I think I got it figured out. I'm online. Sorry about the delay. Oh, we're good. Thank you. All right. So a resolution 22-40 is recognition of city service from Eliz for Elizabeth Milbroth. Um, I'm gonna, can I get a, uh, a motion on this? I move to... Um, I move to adopt resolution 22-40 in appreciation of public service to, to the city of Lake Mills for, for Elizabeth Milbreath. Second. All right, so there's a motion from Ms. Quidnow, second by Mrs. Bishop. Um, let me go ahead and read the resolution real quick. Resolution 22-40 in appreciation of public service to the city of Lake Mills, Elizabeth Milbroth. Whereas the City Council of the City of Lake Mills desires to recognize and honor Elizabeth Milbroth for her loyal 25 years of service to the City of Lake Mills. And whereas Elizabeth spent all her time tirelessly working in the finance and treasurer functions, including accounting, bookkeeping, banking services, cash management, investments, and debt financing. And whereas Elizabeth Milbroth ensured that the integrity of the city's books, budget, budgets, books, and investments were safeguarded, and whereas Elizabeth Milbroth passion created a productive, cohesive, and loyal team that under her leadership worked independently to solve problems and express their views directly and honestly, and whereas Elizabeth, Elizabeth Milbroth was provided reliable, and trustworthy service that most residents will not recognize but has contributed to the betterment of Lake Mills. Now therefore be it resolved that the City Council of the City of Lake Mills does hereby wish to express their gratitude and acknowledgement on behalf of the citizens of Lake Mills to commend Elizabeth Milbroth for her devotion, passion, and public service given to the City of Lake Mills resolved the second day of August 2022. City staff, some comment here? Well, I probably worked with Betsy. Well, no, Dwayne probably has worked with Betsy the longest, but I've mm -hmm. probably the second longest of those around here. Um, so I've known her a long time. She has uh, always been there. She's worked hard. She's put in a lot of time. She made sure that uh, she provided a highly ethical and, and a lot of integrity in her work. And uh, we really appreciated the fact that she uh, kind of kept on us and kept us in the right direction. And you'll note that the city always improved in the financial condition in the 22 years that 
that I've been here. So sh she was a significant part of that. So I appreciate everything she's done. Great. Any other comment from city staff? I mean, that was a great endorsement, but. I just want to say that Betsy is absolutely delightful. Um, what a lady. So I appreciate working with you very much. Thank you. Dwayne? <laughs> since, since Steve called you out, I thought that um, maybe it would be appropriate. <laughs> Come up to the mic. I only called him out because he's been around so long. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Betsy, uh, a number of years, obviously, all those audits, all of those uh, review of projects, um, it was a joy working with you over all of those years, um, probably as early as all of those 25 years. Um, was great working with you. You're always respectful and willing to work through issues, and uh, we always seem to get to the end of those audits, and uh, I thank you because those were some long hours at times. <laughs> Thanks again and enjoy your time. So Betsy, uh, I only was around for one budget process, but it was delightful working with you on that. And um, whenever I had questions on anything financial, you were very quick to respond. And if you, if you didn't have the answer, you were, you were quick to uh, look up those answers and, and get back. So. Uh, from, from my viewpoint, thank you uh, for, for the work that you've done, and I'm sure that you did that for the full 25 years that you were here, so uh, thanks. Betsy, I'd like to just add my best wishes. I've really appreciated working with you, um, especially the last year and a half, and I think um, one of the things that this resolution points out is that most residents wouldn't recognize the work that's done in the treasurer's office, but if it's not done, well or not done properly, then it does come to people's attention. So I think, I, I just thank you for so many years of um, service and your dedication and your integrity and your work. Thank you. And all the best in your retirement. Thank you, Betsy, again for your work. I've also enjoyed getting to know you from the time that I've been here, and it has been a delight, as everybody else has said. So appreciate your time, and I hope that you enjoy your well-deserved retirement. And last but not least, I just adore you, and I think that you are a very wonderful person. Um, I really like your professionalism, and always that you're, you have a smile on your face and you're willing to laugh. I think that that is probably one of the most important pieces of working in government, is being able to laugh at some things. So I appreciate that sense of humor. Thank you. Mr. Fields, did you have a comment? I didn't want to cut you off here. No, that's fine. Thank you. No, Betsy, uh, it's been great working with you. You're a rock star, so uh, enjoy retirement. It is well-deserved. All right. I think it's time to vote. Uh, roll call. Ms. Quednow? Aye. Mr. Waters? Aye. Ms. Curler? Aye. Mrs. Bishop? Aye. Mr. Fields? Aye. Motion passes 5 0. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just come out and shake your hand real quick and thank you. Okay, thank you. Do we need to suspend the rules since she's no, no longer staff? Okay. Well, thank you for all the kind things you've said. I really appreciate that. The resolution is wonderful and it'll be a memory. Um, I had a, a great career here with the city. I really appreciate all the opportunities that were presented to me to start as a deputy clerk treasurer and then as a clerk and then as the uh, the uh, Treasurer Finance Director. It has been wonderful working here and all of the uh, professional and dedicated people as the uh, city staff, the uh, 
elected officials that I've worked with so many through the years, and even volunteers that come and put in their dedicated time and, and wonderful work that they do. So it has been a wonderful time working for the city, and I will remember so many of you in the years to come. I appreciate everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda is a discussion decision on liquor license agent change for IYS Ventures, LLC, DBA, iMart Stores, 206 West Madison Street, Cheryl Stovell. Uh, Misty, do you have some uh, background on this? This license was just issued at the last council meeting. Um, and then they had a manager change right away, so they put in their application. Uh, they've done everything. The background check came back completely fine, so it's simply just an agent change that requires the council um, to approve. All right, so we can just do a, a quick vote on this then. Any, any other questions or comments? All right. A motion. Uh, I guess we do need a motion to uh, make the... Uh, the agent change. So I'll make a motion to approve the liquor license agent change for IYS Ventures LLC doing business as iMart Stores. Second. For agent Cheryl Stoll. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Second. All right. Motion by Ms. Curler. Second by Ms. Quidnell. Any uh, any additional comment or questions? Seeing none. Can we have a roll call? Mr. Waters. Aye. Ms. Curler? Aye. Mrs. Bishop? Aye. Mr. Fields? Aye. Ms. Quendow? Aye. <clears throat> Motion passes 5 0. Thank you. Thank you. Next is a discussion decision on request for proposal of staffing study. This is motion 22-8-1-1, authorizing the city manager to advertise a request for proposal for staffing study. Can we get a motion? I move to approve motion 22-8-1-1, authorizing the city manager to advertise a request for proposals for staffing study. A second. Motion by Mrs. Bishop, a second by Ms. Quidnell. City staff comment. Oh, it was budgeted back in uh, last November. Uh, we've been holding off on it to see how things go in relationship to the end of the year. Um, we brought it up again as part of uh, the emergency services information that we've been discussing. And so there were some modifications done to the original RFP. Uh, I followed uh, Ms. Bishop's recommendation and put in a early timeline for the emergency services and then a timeline for the rest of the study to be completed. Um, so that went right along with the discussion we had and it gets it uh, completed in a relatively short period of time and gives you enough time to follow up on the letter that you received that uh, um, Lake Mills EMS would continue until um, the middle of next year, 23. So uh, I think this gives you a, uh, a good opportunity to review all the staff, but particularly early information on the emergency services staff so that you can make the best decision possible. And uh, I should have it out Thursday, and we should be able to have the information back uh, by the first meeting in September. All right, any questions or comments? Yes. I've got a comment and a, uh, maybe a minor suggestion. Um, thank you for attaching the memo from last year because that I think that just reminded us all of the context and I think we, I, I recalled that we had approved it in the budget but the background is always good for people to be reminded of. Um, I was wondering under the scope of services, um, there's a reference in the intro paragraph there about um, 
you know, operational efficiencies and process improvements. And I wondered if maybe in adding an item 12, asking the consultant to identify any others of those. Um, so something along the lines of identify any other recommendations for operational efficiencies and process improvements. Uh, maybe adding an item 12 there because that could, it could be something outside of, you know, changing what jobs people have. It might be some purchase of technology or, you know, some other process improvement that's not just staffing. So I don't know how if others would um, agree with that, but I, I think I'd like to hear any other ideas they come up with as they're, as they're looking at our staffing situation. Sounds great. I do have a, a question with regard to um, how you had stated that it would be first EMS services or emergency services and then the rest of the staff. Um, but I don't see that spelled out in the, the, the new RFP. Um, so I don't know if we wanted to make that um, more specific. That way then whomever it is that is coming to um, propose their, their consultant business, they understand that there's, this, is the, this is the highest need at this point. Um, let me, um, under project description, yeah. uh, the final paragraph says the consultant will complete the staffing model analysis for the emergency services departments by November 24th. <clears throat> okay, um, I see that. Um, just wondering if that would be something maybe we should put a little bit sooner because I think if it's in, in there um, more in the beginning of the RFP, I feel like it would be important that they would be able to see that right there. It looks kind of like it's like a afterthought. Well, I, I did mention again in the project timeline, uh, and I'm pretty sure I had it in there at least three times that this, the most important part of it was the EMS service or the uh, emergency services, which includes police, fire, and EMS. Okay. But I'll, you know, if you want, I can put it in, but generally the, purpose of the study, which is where the first, well, is, is very general. And then the project description, which is where it talks about the emergency services, probably the most critical part. I didn't want to get too carried away because they're going to come in, they're going to do their research and, and uh, start from that standpoint. So as long as they know what product they have to deliver first, they'll be on that. Okay. Anything else, any other comments? So those suggestions don't impact the uh, the motion really because that's uh, part of just, the work. Yeah, I can just add them. Okay. So uh, let's move forward. Any, if there's no other comments, let's move forward with a uh, roll call. All right, please roll call. Ms. Curler? Aye. Mrs. Bishop? Aye. Mr. Fields? Aye. Ms. Quednow? Aye. Mr. Waters? Aye. Motion passes 5 0. Thank you. Thank you. Next is the uh, discussion decision on acceptance on accepting the Lake Mill strategic planning report. It's currently tabled, so we'll have to pull that off of. Uh, off its tabled state and reactivate it, and then we can get into discussion. If we're good with pulling it off the table. How do we word that if we're pulling it off the table? Is it like untable this motion, or how would we, what's the proper verbiage? Motion to bring it off the table. Thank you. I um, move to take motion 22-8-1-2 off of the table for the purposes of discussion with regard to the, um, the corrections that were made to the strategic plan report. Second. Motion by Ms. Quidnell, second by Mrs. Bishop. All right, so we are in the uh, discussion. Any staff comment? I, I don't have any. Okay. 
So um, at the last meeting, it was tabled just to give us more time and get more feedback from the community. Um, I, I didn't receive any, any feedback from the community, to be, to be honest. Um, but it did give me more of an opportunity to review it. And um, Mr. Waters, um, just a point of order. Can we vote on the motion to, to, remove, to, to remove from the table? Great. <laughs> OK. Thanks. Sure we can. <laughs> OK, so, Mrs. Bishop. Uh, go ahead. Aye. Do we? I was just going to summarize that that we're uh, taking that we're uh, voting on a motion to take to take the strategic the uh, Lake Mill strategic planning report off the uh, off the table and uh, and going to discussion. So I think you okay. requested mm -hmm. Mrs. Bishop's vote. Ms. Bishop, aye. Mr. Fields, aye. Ms. Quadnow, aye. Mr. Waters? Aye. Ms. Curler? Aye. Motion passes 5 0. Thank you. So there was a handout that came before the, the uh, meeting. Did, did you have some? No, Do you I have believe some comment to that, that? Was, that was prepared by Ms. Curler with regard to the motion 22-8-1-2. I believe she has a prepared amendment. Yes, I was, I was planning to introduce some amendments to the motion itself, uh, but I know we may want to talk about any possible revisions to the report first, um, or at least that what would be my thought. <clears throat> when I reviewed it, um, under the weaknesses that had listed public safety. And uh, I wasn't, sh I didn't feel that that was a, a fair assessment. Maybe public safety staffing would be a, a weakness, but uh, I, I didn't feel that, um, that the police department and the uh, fire department was a weakness within, within the city. I'm not sure if that, summed, if, if that summarizes other people's thoughts or not. Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment of that um, bullet point. Also, keeping in mind that these are general topics that we're supposed to consider moving forward as our main goals and, and points and considerations. But I would be OK with changing that. And I think that's appropriate. I'm trying to recall our, our conversations during our strategic planning meetings, and I think it kind of reflected the, the challenges that we're facing with emergency services. And, um, but, but I think, you know, the way it's worded as a threat doesn't, certainly I would agree that that doesn't seem the appropriate phrasing. Mr. Waters, what page was that on? Do you recall? I am uh, pulling it up right now. I think that's on page I seven. Think it's the Fourth, fifth page, actually. It's numbered page, page number seven. seven. There you go, numbered yeah, page SWAT seven. Analysis. Got it. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, I just wanted to look at it again. So it was listed in green under weaknesses. It's so it lists public safety, police, right. and fire department. Excuse me. Um, it's also listed under threats, and um, so I'm fine with it in the uh, threats okay. area. Okay. So kind of again reflecting that kind of emergency services challenges that we're facing. Because there it's talking public safety in general, and uh, that would roll in the uh, EMS concerns that we're that we're currently uh, addressing. So should we, are, are people wanting to maybe just remove that bullet point from under weaknesses or to revise it? I would be good with revising it to uh, public safety staffing. Yeah, I like that as well. It reflects the, 
you know, I think there's community concerns about the, the number of staff. We also have issues with part-time versus full-time versus paid on-premise, that kind of thing. So I think that kind of captures that. Are we good with a consensus there then? Yes. It sounds like it. And then um, on page nine, infrastructure and capital improvements. There's a bullet point, maintain the current level of maintenance and step up a schedule to meet current requirements. And I was wondering if that should be rewarded to maybe something like maintain the current level of maintenance and adjust the schedule to meet immediate needs. Does that better address that area? I can repeat it one more time here. Maintain the current levels, maintain the current level of maintenance and adjust the schedule to meet immediate needs. What about just meet needs? Because we're not being I'm immediate need seems like almost reactionary to like mm. what we need right now versus the planning aspect of it. And we need to be planning as well. Usually when we're adjusting the schedule, it's because of a something that just came up and we have to <laughs> we have to move quick to address it. But, I also uh, think that she didn't mean step, but instead meant set. Because otherwise, it, step up a schedule doesn't quite make sense to me. Maintain the current level of maintenance and step and set up a schedule to meet current requirements. That makes more sense to me than um, step. Typos happen. Yeah, I don't remember any discussion about we were wanting to expand the. Um, maintenance or you know do more streets a year or more water mains a year anything I don't think we were talking about that well we did talk about adjusting the schedule because of grants and right. Um, right. moving things around a little bit to uh, mm -hmm. to uh, address that so if we if we get grant money then we would want to step up and maybe address some areas that that would allow uh, allow better services within the city so could we also take out the second current? And because then it would, um, we could say, and set up a schedule to meet requirements. So read it one more time. Sure. Maintain the current level of maintenance and set up a schedule to meet requirements. Well, the end of that is what Mr. Waters had a change to. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to figure out how your two changes would mesh together. What I, was yours? What was I changed yours? it to needs instead of requirements. Ah, so just to meet needs? Yeah. I'm good with that. Okay. So to set up a schedule to meet needs? Is that what we're... Okay. I would also maybe in the second um, bullet point would reword it to say use flexible funding to accommodate and prepare for fluctuations in the schedule as opposed to react. Well, that's interesting. I was thinking react was, was maybe the right word because sometimes the grant opportunities come up on a, you know in an unexpected way. So, um, but I guess to the extent that um, the utility staff are prepared for that event, you know, that the way you've ordered it also makes sense. I don't know what you guys think. It can go either way. Right. I, I think React, considering what we've, um, what we have previously in this plan where it, um, as a weakness, it mentions that um, we are more reactive than we are proactive. 
Um, so to me, that feels like a negative connotation word, and that's why I was thinking maybe we could change it so that it looks more proactive as opposed to reactive. Not only looks, but is, is more proactive. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, you know. So it would be use flexible funding to accommodate and be prepared for fluctuations in the schedule? Is that... Is that how you're phrasing it? I didn't have be prepared for. I oh, just okay. said um, to accommodate and prepare for fluctuations oh, in the schedule. Okay. I'm okay with that. Steve, can you hear? Are you yes, good with all those, Steve? Okay. Yep. I'm actually, I'm good with the way it is right now, or if you want to change it, I'm fine also. Okay. Any other discussion or thoughts? Yes. I had an item, I'm on the same page under communications that I would like to um, tweak a little bit. The current language, let me get my glasses on here. Um, it's the second bullet, um, talks about measuring engagement which I agree that we should do, but I don't think that's the council goal. I think the council goal is to engage, that we wanna engage our citizens. So I'm proposing that it would just be rephrased to say, engage citizens in a variety of ways. Um, so that, you know, including public surveys, city council meetings. Um, and then on that third sub bullet, I would just tweak that to say, seeking input from city committees and boards. Sounds great. So for us, it's a goal, and then we would expect the city manager and staff to measure, you know, how well are we mm. doing at that goal. Or, and we would measure ourselves. No, that's good. You guys good with that revision? Mm -hmm. OK. Anything else, Ms. Curler? Um, the only thing I had under the, uh, on page eight, under the staffing, when we talked about, well, it's staffing and financial prioritization. Um, so the first bullet says, put strategies in place to address financial challenges. I think that's good. And then it says, possible strategies include, um, and it's got seeking grants, addressing and updating fee schedule. And I had in my notes from our um, work sessions, seeking new revenue sources. And I just wonder if we would want to add that, um, just to kind of highlight that you know we don't know what they might be or when they might be available what do you guys think it'd be great any new revenue would be wonderful <laughs> could we just pull that into the first bullet point because um, it, it would be in, in the same line as a grant so um, instead of seeking grants for appropriate projects perhaps it would be seeking um, what was the terminology you used? I'm forgetting. I just said new revenue sources. So, or just know, revenue sources? Without taxation, right? New revenue without taxation. Right, not, right, not right. property tax. <laughs> um, Does it, I mean. So how would you phrase it then? Oh, uh, just saying seeking new revenue sources for appropriate projects, and that way then new revenue sources, uh, grants fall under that category? I think, but I might be wrong. I guess I'm, I'm kind of inclined to keep them separate only because I think our staff already do a really good job of looking for the grants that are, you know, kind of routine and then they know that they're available and they keep their eyes out for them. And this might be something totally out of the box. It might not be a grant. And um, so to be kind of giving the staff direction to keep their eyes out for something new, I guess, is why I would like to kind of highlight that. Okay. But what do other people think? I mean, I'm happy to combine it together, too, if it, if it reads more clearly. I'm fine with that. Is it a separate bullet? Or? Yeah. Okay. Catherine, do you have any thoughts one way or the other? I'm okay either way. Okay. okay, those are my thoughts. Anything else? Okay. 
So then looking at the motion itself. Oh, um, I guess I do have two other things. One is I would recommend that we update the cover page to August 2022. Okay. And um, I don't know how we want to handle the city manager, but I'm thinking Steve's not going to be available <laughs> to talk about the strategic plan for too much longer. So um, whether we want to put the new city manager's name in or just have city manager and the phone number, uh, but I probably should take Steve Wilkie out of the mix. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> but you were helpful in this process. Yeah, you, you were so, very helpful well, in the process, but we don't <laughs> expect you to be working on these. <laughs> At least not after September 8th. <laughs> Do we make it a uh, September publish date and um, whoever the new city manager is feature that city manager? We could do just that. postpone it for a month as far as the publication date. Does that make sense? Sure. Is there a reason that we might need to, to publish it quicker? Only t to the extent that it gives our current city manager some direction in working on the budget, which you're currently working on, um, because that would be the only okay. connection. I think just having it available right now is enough direction. Okay, okay. So change the date to September then, yeah. I'm thinking? Okay. With the new city manager. Anything else on the report? Okay, so now we're focusing on the motion. Okay, so I would like to make a motion to amend motion 22-8-1-2. And I've, um, uh, our, our city attorney has passed out um, my proposed revisions to the motion and I've sent an email to Steve Fields. Mr. Fields, did you, I don't know if you're getting email, but um, so I sent this to you. So, um, and I guess we'll, based on our discussion, we'll have to change the first item. But so what I'm proposing is in section one, um, just to add the phrase and revised. Um, September? Or, yeah, or, or revision date, September 2022. So then that refers to the changes that we've just made. And then I'm proposing to insert a new section three that would read that the 2022 Lake Mill Strategic Plan represents the planning and goal setting report that identifies the city council strategic goals and priorities. Um, the reason I want to insert that section is that that's the phrasing that's used in our city code under the city council responsibilities it talks about a planning and goal setting report so i just want to kind of make that make that connection um, and then um, current section three would be renumbered as four and i would propose to revise it so that it reads that the city council and city manager will use the 2022 lake mill strategic plan to guide the organization's decisions policies and actions and then renumbering four as section five and revising this section to read that the city clerk is directed to file a copy of this motion as an official city document, comma, to distribute the 2022 Lake Mills strategic plan to all city committees, boards, and commissions, and to post the 2022 Lake Mills strategic plan on the city's website with other approved city plans. Is there a second? Second. So a motion to amend by Ms. Curler, second by Mrs. Bishop. Any further discussion or comment? All right, seeing none, let's move to a roll call on the amended motion. Mr. Fields? Aye. Ms. Quetau? Aye. Mr. Waters? Aye. Ms. Curler? Aye. Mrs. Bishop? Aye. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. So 
point of order was that we just amended you tell me the motion. Was it a motion to amend or a motion to amend and adopt? Okay, so now we have to adopt the amended motion to finish this up. Vote again? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do we need a motion on that? Yeah. So motion to accept the amended motion. I'll make a motion that we adopt the amended motion 22-8-1-2. I'll second. Is that correct? <laughs> okay. All right, motion to adopt the amended motion, 22-8-1-2. Motion by Ms. Curler, second by Ms. Quidnell. Any uh, further discussion or questions on the question? Seeing none, let's have a roll call vote on the, adopt, the adoption of the amended motion 22-8-1-2. Roll call. Ms. Quendow? Aye. Mr. Waters? Aye. Ms. Curler? Aye. Mrs. Bishop? Aye. Mr. Fields? Aye. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you. Are we good to go, Mr. Drescher? Yep. All right. Fantastic. So we now have a Lake Mill strategic planning report. So I'll congratulations. Work. Yeah, a lot of hard work. Yeah, so I'll work with Steve to talk to Aaron and just get those updates in the document made since she prepared that for us, and then we can get it posted. All right, fantastic. Next is resolution twenty two dash forty one, authorizing the appointment of a city manager for the city of Lake Mills, and approval of the city manager's employment agreement. We have a motion on resolution 22-41. I move to adopt resolution 22-41. Do you want me to? Oh, okay, sorry. I move to adopt resolution 22-41. I'm sorry, I closed the thing. Um, mm, just a moment. I'm having a moment here. Um, the um, authorizing the appointment of a city manager to the city of Lake Mills and approval of the city manager employment agreement. Second. Motion by Ms. Quidnell, second by Mrs. Bishop. Staff comment? Mr. Drescher? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think Drake is online, um, but this is the culmination of the city manager search and, search and appointment process. Um, I, I, we kind of negotiated um, within the terms that you provided. Uh, his employment agreement, uh, he has executed that employment agreement. It has not been countersigned. Um, I know that he is uh, currently acting in his role as administrator for New Glarus tonight, um, so I don't believe he's online. Do you, do you have specific questions or is there an update that you specifically want? I have a comment. Um, I thought that the, the whole process was done very professionally from the, uh, from the executive firm that, that helped us through this process, from a staffing help, um, the actual review process with the candidates. Um, it was very nice to have community involvement in the process and, uh, and great feedback from the community. And um, I think that we ended up with a, a strong candidate here with uh, Mr. Drake Daly and uh, looking forward to, uh, to working with him. So, any other comments? Uh, I would just add to that um, echo that I thought it was a very good process and um, I, so appreciated the citizens who came to our um, uh, meet and greet session and all of the ideas and questions that they had for our city manager. The, the engagement was really wonderful. Um, and I think uh, a lot of our citizens may not know all the different steps that we went through, but there was a lot of material that was available to the city council from reference checks, background checks, um, what else, emotional intelligence surveys. There was a, a considerable amount of information that we had um, 
to work with in addition to the input from staff and citizens. So it was really um, valuable to have all of that information to help us make a good what I think is a good decision. Any other comments or questions? All right. So we're going to move forward with a roll call um, of resolution 22-41, which is the appointment of the city manager and his contract for uh, Mr. Drake Great Daly. Daily. I, I kind of want to flip his name every once in a while, but it's Drake Daly. Uh, Mr. Waters, point of order, i just recalling that the um, employment contract needs to have a date filled in, and is that to be done by us tonight? Or? I think there's. we still have to come to terms on that specific issue. Uh, okay. There will be um, conversation up until he's, he has to give 30 days notice at um, New Glarus. I think there's some contemplation of a little bit of time to move, get a little bit settled in, and then start. He's looking at the beginning of September, but I don't have an exact date yet. Uh, after tonight, I will be in touch with Mr. Daly, and uh, we'll, we'll come up with that date. So can we approve this with an, a blank date, and then how do we, how do we find out what the, you know, what the actual start date is? Um, I'll tell you. Oh, okay. Um, I okay. mean, that's really the best that I have. He has to give 30 days notice. 30 days from today is the beginning of September. Um, so it's it's going to be either that first week of September or the second week of September from what it sounds like. Okay. He didn't want to give notice before we, we voted on this? Uh, no, he absolutely did not. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. <laughs> he was willing to sign the contract, though. I think that's an act in good faith, certainly. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? All right, seeing none, let's move forward with a roll call on that resolution 22-41, the appointment of the city manager. Mr. Waters? Aye. Ms. Curler? Aye. Mrs. Bishop? Aye. Mr. Fields? Aye. Ms. Quedal? Aye. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. So not to let this slip by, I think we got, Mr. Wilkie has two more meetings, the, the second meeting in August and then the, uh, the first meeting in September, right? That's correct. So we'll have plenty of time to, uh, to, to thank you for your, your service and, and all that good stuff, but uh, I, I, like I didn't just want to let this slip by and, and, <laughs> and not mention something, so. If it goes like Betsy's, you'll be talking to me in March. March? <laughs> We'll have a, resu a resolution for you in March. Okay. All right. Next is resolution 22-42, acceptance of public improvements and reduction of financial guarantee, Topol Service Center redevelopment. Um, normally, I guess we, we, we have Lori read these every once in a while. I, I've been skipping over that tonight. <laughs> I guess I'm in a hurry to get this meeting going, but um, Lori, can you read Resolution 22-42? Yes, I can. You want me to read the entire thing? No. Okay, just, just the title. Yeah. Okay. Resolution 22-42, Acceptance of Public Improvements and Reduction of Financial Guarantee, Topol Service Center Redevelopment. So that's probably why I don't have you read it, because it's just the same thing that I say in before <laughs> that, so. <laughs> um. Well, I'll make a motion to approve Resolution 22-42, the acceptance of public improvements and reduction of financial guarantee for Topol Service Center redevelopment. Second. So motion by Ms. Curler, second by Mrs. Bishop. Uh, staff comment? Um. <clears throat> They signed a developer's agreement that agreed to build some infrastructure that uh, the city required, and it required a financial guarantee of $55,000. Uh, we have inspected their improvements and have signed off on them, so we recommend the city council uh, reduce the financial guarantee as instructed in the code. It does require that they maintain a one-year warranty um, of 8250 dollars uh, I know that they have requested that that be waived, so that's up to you guys. Um, we present it as required by the code. OK. 
Okay. I believe we have uh, some uh, folks here from Topols. Can we suspend the rules? And I move to suspend the rules to allow the Topols to speak. Second. Thank you, okay. and good evening. Can I go ahead, Greg? Or? Yes, go okay. ahead. Oh, that. we need a vote. All those in favor of suspending the rules? Steve, that's aye. <laughs> aye. All right. <laughs> Slight delay. Tara, you're on the mic. Go ahead. Great. Thank you again. Um, first of all, I want to start off just by thanking um, Steve and Dan and everybody from the city um, and at the council level for all of their support in making this possible for us. Um, it's been quite a quite a learning uh, situation for us, but we're glad to finally almost be to the uh, final finish line. So thank you. Um, I just wanted to go over uh, one of the references that was sent in the package was a letter from Brandon um, from Strand and Associates where he does reference the fact that um, this is a different situation for many and that we are not dedicating this um, back to the city. Uh, this is something that we are owning and maintaining um, throughout and um, he was very clear that it is not a public improvement actually they just wanted to make sure that our work was being done according to what the public was setting forward or what the city um, the guidelines and code we've done that fortunately and um, they've done a wonderful job uh, we're very fortunate to have Freedy and Associates working with us and they do guarantee their work um, for quite some time and we know that we have them to be able to stand back on as well as a local uh, company in forest um, construction that was able to do the work for us so uh, we are asking that the um, that the financial guarantee reduction of eight thousand two hundred fifty dollars be removed from the resolution um, it looks like it's also mentioned uh, further be resolved and then it kind of goes on to talk about required public improvements but then again um, this is not a public improvement Is there any questions for Mrs. Topol? Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from any of your folks there? Okay, just want to make sure I didn't cut anybody off. So we're in the question and comment phase. Any questions or comments? So to Ms. Topol's point and Mr. Herbert's letter, how do we go about fixing this resolution? Do we just remove reference to the acceptance of public improvements? No, it's, a it's an improvement required by the public. So if you can't remove that part. You just remove the part that says that uh, you, you're requiring them to maintain a financial warranty because they have uh, a warranty through their contractor. So, well, Okay, because we would normally have the warranty because it's city land and the city would go back and enforce the warranty in that year if something was going on. So that's why you're saying remove the warranty requirement for this resolution. Yeah, this is, this is even more unusual. We never accept detention basins unless we build them ourselves. So the vast majority of detention basins in the city are owned by homeowners associations. We still require the financial guarantee and those types of things. In this case, it's one private property owner and it handles all their facilities and they have a warranty through their contractor which is a little bit different than what we normally see through the other types of public contracting so uh, I don't have any problem it's such a small detention basin that you you would hardly notice it if you weren't paying particular attention it's not like the one in Brookstone or those types of detention basins so I'm, I'm not overly concerned about it Freedy has been good to work with uh, so we, I'm comfortable with that. That's up to the council to determine whether they want to continue to follow the code as it is or to look at this as a special condition, which has already been noted by, you know, under the conditions of uh, that Tara mentioned and Brandon mentioned. Well, for not enforcing a warranty because it's not a public improvement, that's fine. I'm concerned about the language in the resolution. And at least, I'm trying to read through it here, at least two places, maybe more, it says, uh, regarding the acceptance of the required public improvements, saying that we're taking this on as the city. And so does there need to be a fix to that language in this resolution? Yeah, <clears throat> we're not, it's kind of hard. Let's say instead of accept, let's say we uh, approve the construction of the improvements as required by the public. I 
think I would prefer that. Yeah, then that would be great. I'm, I'm fine with that because that that's really what's going on here. They were required to build that by the city for public improvements to reduce flooding and, and uh, uh, pollution in the water. So it is a, a pr a, an improvement required at, by us for the public benefit, um, but it, it's not actually being given to the city like in a lot of cases. But so we are, we need to accept that it was constructed according to the city requirements. Um, I think that we went with approved that the city approves the, the requirements as required? We can say that, but that's not what the resolution currently says. Right. So I would propose at this point tabling this until the next meeting so that these changes can be made throughout. I don't know if Ms. Topol has an issue with that. I don't know that two weeks makes a difference, especially because we're not enforcing a warranty. The one year period really seems to be moot here. Um, Ms. Topol, would that be okay with you if we tabled this to get those changes made? I guess the only question I would have is if it would affect us getting occupancy or not, which should we're hoping to happen on Thursday. I'm sorry, getting the what? Uh, are, we're supposed to um, be having our final inspection on Thursday. So my question would be is if it would affect occupancy. Uh, no, it wouldn't affect occupancy. We've already approved the construction, so the release of the financial guarantee wouldn't have any impact on that. Okay, then two weeks is fine. Okay. Before we table, can I ask a quick question? Sure. I mean, otherwise, it, we would just limp through making the changes, and I would rather mm -hmm. not do that. But that's the only reason I proposed it. On um, the right to cure, what would be the steps that we would take if we don't have this type of deposit? What are the steps the city would take for, to cure the situation? Well, we, we would ask Topols to, we would send Topols a notice, and they would work with their contractor to cure. Um, the city would also then have the option of, of going in and fixing it in, under a special charge or a special assessment and, and filing that against them. Um, the, the, they would either have to sign off on that or the council would have to approve that, but that's probably the most likely. Uh, <clears throat> if there were uh, a one-year warranty period uh, and you held that money, anything over and above it, <clears throat> Um, you would have to figure out how to come up with that money anyways anything under it then you got to go through the full process and figure out what's has or hasn't been spent and refund so it there's nothing easy about following up on a, on a project like that but um, at least you have the options and generally having the cash in hand is the easiest okay and, and also I would like to uh comment uh, how wonderful your your facility looks it's uh, just I, I moved to the south side so i, I get to look at it all the time and it, it's, a, it's a pleasure to uh, to drive by at this point and uh and i, I hope that uh once you get open that uh, maybe city council might get an invitation to come by and and take a look at it so uh absolutely that'd be great all right can I make a further comment about that? Since sure. I grew up in a way here, my grandfather would often go to Topol Station and the 76 sign was always something that he would um, comment on, like how, um, how iconic it was. So thank you for bringing it back. I think that's very important. Thank you very much. Any other comments? Is there a motion? I just wanted to make, sorry, after all this goodwill, I guess I still had a clarifying question. So are, are we understanding that these are not, I mean, I mean, I think there still is a confusion in my mind about Brandon's email where he is saying that they're not public improvements and that the letter of credit could be released. But um, Steve, you're saying that they still are under the ordinance, they are still considered to be public improvements, is that right? <clears throat> also under the development agreement, they're required public the improvements. Can't he did turn his mic up. Uh, in the development agreement, they are required public improvements. I think the line that Brandon is actually drawing is acceptance of those improvements. It's wholly situated on property that they own. There is no public access. We don't have an easement right to that. We're not expected to maintain the stormwater pond. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of the hybrid situation that Steve is getting at. 
while they're they are they're called for and they benefit the public um, they aren't dedicated or accepted by the city yeah so that's why we're kind of waffling on the word of accept and coming up with a better word at the next meeting if they can wait um, I don't have any problem with that I think that's you know we can come up with something that makes it a little bit clearer I, no one's ever asked the question before uh, and we have accepted a lot of these types of pulp, these improvements that we you know our, our hybrids as Dan has noted um, but you know we can we can wordsmith it make sure that we get it back right all right so the questions or comments at this point I would move to table resolution 2242 acceptance of public improvements for Topol service center redevelopment until the next City Council meeting so that uh, the areas that refer to acceptance of the improvements as public improvements can be changed uh, maybe to reference acknowledge that the requirements have been met or some other such language I'll second motion to table by mrs. Bishop second by Ms. quid now any further discussion um, is it your intention Ms. Bishop that the um, financial guarantee then would be reduced to zero and there would be no one-year warranty period is that what we're seeking in an updated resolution um, that was not part of the motion I don't know what the appropriate response is for that issue because um, mr. Wilkie did mention other courses of action to take if something happened to this improvement so I I don't know as the author of that motion I believe you can still change it if you'd like it hasn't been voted upon I mean what's the recommendation from staff on that if it were me and you wanted to reduce that financial guarantee down you would have them sign something that says they'd waive on us on a special charge if required um, I don't intend to do that with my motion okay I just recommended I didn't hear what you said you don't oh I was declining to okay. make that recommendation great thanks all right any other discussion so the vote is to uh, table resolution 22-42 roll call please miss miss curler aye mrs. Bishop aye mr. Fields aye Ms. Quendow aye mr. Waters aye motion passed five zero thank you thank you next is a resolution 22-43 Lori can you read that I, I stopped short so you can actually have some glory there <laughs> resolution 22-43 acceptance of public improvements and reduction of financial guarantee Rock Creek luxury apartments northern management all right can we have a motion I move to approve resolution 22-43 acceptance of public improvements and reduction of financial guarantee for Rock Creek luxury apartments northern management I'll second motion by mrs. Bishop second by miss curler half comment uh, <clears throat> there are just about two million dollars worth of public improvements in here including water main sanitary sewer electric and stormwater it does have a very similar detention basin but uh, the main thing is here that the uh, I would not recommend waiving the uh, financial guarantee in this in any way shape or form I think that uh, you need that there and um, the public improvements have been recommended for approval they're out about five years the developer hasn't made any request to change it so I recommend approving it as is any uh, questions or comments all right seeing none let's move forward with a vote roll call please on what we're what we're voting on is the uh, approval of resolution 22-43 who made that motion 
Mrs. Bishop, it was seconded by Mrs. Curler. Okay. Roll call. Mrs. Bishop? Aye. Mr. Fields? Aye. Ms. Quadnow? Aye. Mr. Waters? Aye. Ms. Curler? Aye. Motion passes 5-0. Thank, Thank you. you. Next on the agenda is Ordinance 1239. This is a second reading. Um, Lori, can you please read this? Just yes. the, uh, the header, wait. Yep. Just the header for the second reading, thank you. You're welcome. Ordinance 1239, amending City of Lake Mills. Ordinance 660-44, official zoning map, City of Lake Mills, Wisconsin. Parcel identification number 018-0713-1214-002. Owner Kingbird Real Estate, second LLC, W7411 County Road V, Lake Mills, Wisconsin. So that was the second reading. We'll have the third reading at our next meeting. Is there any discussion on Ordinance 1239 tonight? Seeing none, let's move forward to the next item, which is Ordinance 1240. Lori, this is the second reading. Can you read that one? Ordinance 1240, amending City Code Chapter 38, City Council, Section 38-3, Meetings, Rules of Procedure. All right, so that was the second reading of Ordinance 1240. Third reading will be at our next meeting. Is there any comment or discussion on this ordinance? Seeing none, let's move forward with Ordinance 1241. This is the first reading of, uh, of this ordinance. So Lori, can you... Uh, I guess read through the whole thing according to current statute. Ordinance number 1241, an ordinance annexing territory to the city of Lake Mills, Jefferson County, Wisconsin. Parcel identification number 018-0713-1113-039. The city council of the city of Lake Mills, Jefferson County, Wisconsin does ordain as follows. Section 1, Territory Annexed, in accordance with Section 66.0217 with stats and the attached and incorporated petition for direct annexation signed by the owners of the property pro proposed to be annexed and filed with the city clerk on June 29, 2022. The following territory to the town of Lake Mills, Jefferson County, Wisconsin, is annexed to the city of Lake Mills, Jefferson County, Wisconsin. Section 2. Effect of annexation from and after the date of this ordinance, the territories described in section one shall be part of the city of Lake Mills, Jefferson County, Wisconsin, for any and all purposes provided by law and all persons coming or residing within such territory shall be subject to all ordinances, rules and regulations governing the city of Lake Mills. Section three, ward designation. The territory described in section one of this ordinance is hereby made a part of ward one of the City of Lake Mills, subject to the ordinances, rules, and regulations of the City of Lake Mills governing wards. Section 4, severability. If any provision of this ordinance is invalid and uncon unconstitutional, such invalidity and unconstitutionality shall not affect the other provisions or applications of this ordinance, and that can be given effect without the invalid or unconstitutional provision of application. Section 5, effective date, the ordinance shall take effect upon passage and publication as provided by law. Wow, thank you. At least it was a short one, one page. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> so that was the first reading of Ordinance 1241. Uh, the second reading will be at our next meeting. Is there any uh, discussion or questions on that ordinance? Um, just a uh, question or a comment for everyone. The um, 
we've already approved an annexation for F&M Bank a few months ago, and this looks like it's an adjacent parcel. Is that correct? That's correct. They're going to add another parcel and, and do a CSM and create a bigger lot. Okay. The original one was a fit the site. I mean, they could get everything on it, but the they wanted access to both of E and B, mm. and the county was controlling that. And so in order to be able to hit the distances required, uh, they needed to buy that additional lot. Oh, from the intersection for, yeah. Right. Yeah, thank you. Are they, uh, is there any urgency here uh, to go through the, th the th three reading process? No, they just started, uh, they're going to have to go through plan commission for the zoning, and then that ordinance will come forward, so that'll be out of ways. Probably, you know, that one you might want to think about passing, waiving the readings and going to the third reading right away for the ordinance, the zoning ordinance. Um, BSO is pretty much done. But we won't see that till 1st of September, probably? Yeah. yeah, even that's a little bit early. Okay. But we'll see what happens. But that would be the earliest that you would see it. So this isn't slowing them up at this point? No. Okay. Uh, Just wanted to, to make sure. Any other questions? All right, next is Ordinance 1242. Uh, this is the first reading. Lori, can you read through that? Ordinance 1242, Zoning Ordinance Amending Section 660-56, Land Use Regulations and the Matrix of Land Uses, Commercial Indoor Lodging. The City Council of the City of Lake Mills, Jefferson County, Wisconsin, does hereby does here ordain as follows, section one, section 660-56, land use regulations and the matrix in land uses, chapter 660, attachment one is amended as follows. Commercial indoor lodging hereby requires a conditional use permit in B1 and PB zoning districts. District or section two, commercial indoor lodging remains permitted only by the grant of a conditional use permit in R3-12 B2 I1 and PI zoning districts. Nothing in this amendment changes those designations. Section three, adoption of this ordinance amendment has been sponsored by City Council Representative Catherine Bishop. Section four, adoption of this ordinance amendment has been recommended by City of Lake Mills Plan Commission by motion 22-7-3 after consideration of the same at the regular meeting of the Plan Commission on July 26, 2022. Section five, all ordinance or parts of ordinance inconsistent with or contravening the provisions of this ordinance are hereby repealed. Section six, this ordinance shall be in full force and effect from and after its passage and publication as provided by law. Thank you, Lori. So that was the uh, first reading of ordinance 1242. We'll have a second reading in our next meeting. Any uh, qu questions on uh, this ordinance? So I can start with the statement or I can save it for the third reading um, just by way of I guess cleaning this up, section four would be removed for the final reading and I, I would make that motion uh, when we get there. So section four is removed? Yes. So it was, it was not approved by the uh, planning commission? And basically. I can either, I'll talk to Mr. Drescher, I can either clean that up before the next reading or we can make the motion at the final reading. I'm not sure which is the best way to do that. <clears throat> this is the doc excuse me. This is the document that the plan commission also was presented with um, at their meeting. They did not make a recommendation um, to adopt this ordinance. So section four should, at the very least, be stricken from uh, this ordinance in the event that you do choose to pass it. So, Catherine, you made me. Uh do a lot of research on the zoning rules, and uh, it was very enlightening. I, I learned a lot through the process, and uh, the grid sheet is, is very helpful that, that is in our zoning ordinances to, uh, to understand the different businesses and how they, how they lay out depending on the different zones within the city. Um, so currently, 
the um, currently the indoor lodging is permitted in B1, which is essentially the downtown district, and the uh, PB zoning, which is what's PB stand for? Plan business. Business. Plan businesses, which is basically the gateways to our city. Uh, th those type of plan business zones is, is currently where they're permitted. Um, so I guess when I look at the uh, permitting process, it, it allows, by having a permitted locations, it allows a business like this to be directed to certain areas where they could could have their business without getting a conditional permit, basically. So it's, it's currently directing hotel owners towards the downtown or to the, the gateway areas of our, of our community to, to locate without getting a conditional permit. Is that, is that, the, current, that, is that the right way to look at it? That's correct, yes. And so there's two different ways within any zoning district that you can put in a business, per se. One is by right, it's just allowed. The other is typically a conditional use permit. And we currently require conditional use permits in all zoning districts for commercial indoor lodging, which are hotels. Uh, we allow those in all districts um, by conditional use permit, except for the two that Mr. Waters has uh, delineated, which is planned business, which is largely our East Tyranina Park Road um, corridor. Uh, that's the main planned business district and also in our downtown. So as Mr. Waters is saying, um, in those two districts, they're not treated equally currently in our code. And those two districts, um, as he's describing it, would tend to draw somebody who'd want to put a hotel there because there aren't additional requirements. I did have some prepared remarks about what a conditional use permit would require. And again, I can go into that tonight um, to kind of frame how everybody else thinks about this, or we can discuss it more when there's a motion um, at the third reading. So Mr. Waters, yes, I would say you are Could thinking you give about the back that correctly. It'd be great if you gave the background now. Okay, and you I'm, have the benefit. I'm good with that. You have the benefit of having sat in on the last meeting at the Plan Commission, so some of my comments will be the same. Um, but I have added some additional comments based on some issues that came up. So um, I'm relying on the motion that I gave to the Plan Commission as background to this council for my ordinance proposal. Um, and you can really see that there's a discrepancy across the zoning districts as to how commercial indoor lodging is treated based on the conversation Mr. Waters and I just had. And this ordinance amendment would fix that and it would make it so that there's a conditional use permit required for hotels in all zoning districts, not just some of them. Um, so first, the requirements of a conditional use permit so that everyone knows you know, the conditions that are on the table. And it's these, it's like eight things, and I'll list them in a second. If these requirements are met, then the plan commission would typically recommend that the conditional use permit move forward for council approval. And so those items are that the establishment, maintenance, and operation of the proposed conditional use will not be detrimental to or endanger the public health, safety, morals, comfort, or general welfare, that the proposed conditional use will not be injurious, to the use and enjoyment of other property in the immediate vicinity for the purposes already permitted or substantially diminish and impair property values within the neighborhood. The establishment of the proposed conditional use will not impede the normal and orderly development and improvement of surrounding property for uses permitted in the district. Adequate utilities, access roads, drainage, and other necessary facilities will be provided. Adequate measures will be taken to provide ingress and egress. Etc. The proposed conditional use shall be in all respects conformed to the applicable regulations of the district in which it is located. The proposed conditional use at its proposed location is in harmony with the purposes, goals, objectives, policies, and standards of the City of Lake Mills Comprehensive Plan. And the potential public benefits of the proposed conditional use outweigh any and all potential adverse impacts of the proposed conditional use. So. Typically, and we had this conversation at Plan Commission, conditional use permits are used when a use in the district might be a little bit odd or have additional concerns that other uses in the district wouldn't. So if you look at a planned business district, you might, well, for instance, you have Badger Chevrolet, you have uh, McDonald's, you have, I think, Summit is there. So those are all typically retail establishments. And the reason a hotel might be treated a little bit differently with a conditional use permit is because of the additional considerations it brings, such as safety, such as additional traffic, different times of the traffic. You're going to have people coming in and out at all times of the day. 
um, increased traffic more than just, let's say, a bank because, again, of those uses of a hotel. And also what I find interesting is our planned business district along East Taranino Park Road also has across from it residential. So we have to take into consideration those concerns as well for our residential citizens there that could be affected by the increased use of something like a hotel, which is why I think a conditional use permit is still appropriate in a planned biz business district. Um, so that's a little bit of the background as to what a CUP would consider at the plan commission level. And then I still thought it was appropriate to bring it to this council despite their lack of recommendation because we're in a different position than our plan commission. We're elected officials. We have a different policy perspective. And if you even look at our um, strategic you know, plan that we just passed, we are looking at what is the health, safety, and welfare of our citizens. We've said that we want more community engagement. And by passing an ordinance like this requiring a CUP for a hotel, which we don't have one in the city, um, it allows for us as the council to get those recommendations both at a public hearing at the plan commission and recommendations from the plan commission as to how to move forward. So it gives us that input that we've said as a council that we want and we desire. So those are my initial comments as to what this does and why I'd like to move forward with these readings um, given even the lack of recommendation last week. And um, I'll save my other comments to address any questions. Mr. Wilkie, you you wrote a memo. Did you did you want to comment on that, or does the memo stand on its own, or it's, what's your thoughts? Right now, I'll I'll just pass and, and wait till the the third reading. Okay. I have a question for staff. As I look through the zoning regulations, I see that that almost every, if not all, business category has a, a P. In, in the graph, which which means that, that it's permitted in this zone. With regard to indoor commercial lodging specifically? Well, I'm looking at all the others, that, that there are areas within the town that they're permitted to, to, uh, to exist in these zones, where the hotel, if we, if we went through this, if we went with this uh, motion, if we went with this ordinance, it would eliminate uh, any zone within the city for the uh, for a permitted lodging facility, it would all have to go through conditional per, uh, conditional use permit, correct? So I, I want so, to make sure you're focusing in on just indoor commercial lodging. I have some issue with the statements that you made. I mean, there's conditional okay. use throughout that matrix um, for many different uses in many different zoning districts. Um, Bed and breakfast, I think, is an example that the only places where they are, uh, where where they can be permitted, is through a conditional use permit, for instance. So, with regard to indoor commercial lodging specifically, what you see is that it's currently um, a, requires a conditional use permit in R three twelve, in B two, in I one, and in I M P I. It is permitted by right under B one and P B. I can't find Ben breakfast, but I'll, I'll look it up later. Oh, it's on the first page of the matrix, uh, about halfway down under residential. Ben and breakfast, you see the letter C almost all the way across the line in all districts. Okay, thank you. So, I mean, and to go to the, the comment that was made about Badger specifically, um, auto body service or auto body repair very often requires a conditional use permit. Um, with regard to McDonald's, I believe their drive-through requires a conditional use permit. It so it's it's a little broader than the way that you just made it sound. In that it's there's oftentimes a conditional use permit is incorporated into mm, accessory uses or ancillary uses to the original, the kind of the primary use as well. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yeah, Culver's too is the other one where a conditional use permit was required for the drive-through portion of the restaurant. And so it's something where, yes, we have restaurants in the city, for example, but the drive-through portion creates maybe additional traffic. I know it affected in its initial planning the adjacent businesses, and that's why it require you know, in your planning that you do as a city, you want to take that into account before you get to the issue where, okay, now you have a drive-through and it's a problem. You can't really take it back. Um, so that's why you would have a conditional use permit for items like that. Um, and I would say why we even require it for, you know, lodging in the rest of the districts. 
Any other comment or questions? Yes. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make a couple of comments, and I appreciate you bringing this forward, Catherine. I'm, I've also been kind of trying to think about how this fits with our other zoning requirements and, and looking at the matrix. Um, I mean, there are, there are multiple activities in that matrix where as you read across the line, some are permitted by right and some are conditional use permit. And to me, that's how zoning is supposed to work. I mean, Greg, you, you kind of phrased it this, similar to how I think about it, that um, you know, we, if we want certain businesses or, or certain activities to be in certain districts, that's why we set up those zoning districts, and that's why we have a comprehensive plan that says, here's where we want planned business to be, and then these are the kinds of activities that we're going to allow in planned business, and we're going to make that, that um, simpler for those businesses by just having a set of standards in our ordinance rather than having to go through that case by case conditional use review. So I guess I'm still trying to understand why. I don't see a lack of consistency in how indoor commercial lodging is treated in every district. I don't see that as a problem. I see that as the design of our zoning and, and our matrix. So that's something I'm just, I'm, I guess I'm trying to understand why that consistency is more important than um, you know, giving certainty to a business that they know, yeah, this is, this is a kind of activity that this city obviously wants in planned business, so that's, that's, the, that's where I'm going to buy my property or that's where I'm going to develop my lodging. So that's, the, that's what I'm trying to, um, I guess, understand. You know, in the proposal, it seems to me that there should be different requirements for an activity depending on the district that you're in. Any other comments or questions? All right. So thank you. Uh, that was the first reading. And for the second reading, we'll have that, that uh, adjustment made then. Is that the proper way to move we'll forward? We'll amend it. OK, thank okay. you. All right, fantastic. All right, if there's no further questions or comments, we'll move forward to recommendations for future agendas. Mr. Wilkie. Uh, I have a survey proposal ready for the next meeting uh, from the county extension office. We will have a software purchase proposal before the council. It's actually uh, won't be until next year's budget, but we have to order it this year in order to be able to get it online by the time we need it next year. So that'll be up. And then we are looking at a, a proposal to outfit the second, our ambulance to be able to support the EMS in the next 12 months. And those will all three be on the agenda for sure. It's also likely that you have a development agreement in front of you for a new development on the south side. Yes, White Oaks. All right, anything else for recommendations? Okay. And that survey you're talking about, the Sandy Beach survey? The Sandy Beach survey, yeah. yes. Okay, fantastic. I know the community is looking forward to that. All right, there's no other additions. Uh, the meeting stands adjourned at 834. Thank you.